Hello and welcome to the Top Story, a podcast with the headlines of the day from our correspondents around the world. I'm Siju. Coming up in this edition, the International Monetary Fund has warned that the global economy is in danger of getting stuck on a low-growth, high-debt path. The United States' self-centered approach has disillusioned diplomats at a Paris conference, where one billion U.S. dollars were raised in pledges to support Lebanon. And Chinese President Xi Jinping has stressed the crucial role of the global South in driving development and stability, as leaders gathered in Russia for the BRICS meetings. We begin in the Americas. The managing director of the International Monetary Fund has warned that the global economy is in danger of getting stuck on a low-growth, high-debt path. Kristalina Gorgieva was speaking during the ongoing IMF and World Bank Group annual meetings. We expect the global economy to grow by 3.2 percent this year and slow to 3.1 percent annual growth in five years. This is the lowest medium-term outlook in decades. And trade is no more a powerful engine of growth. We live in a more fragmented global economy. Meanwhile, public debt is on track to surpass 100 trillion dollars this year, an all-time high, an equivalent to 93 percent. Of global GDP. So here is the bottom line: the global economy is in danger of getting stuck on a low growth, high debt path. That means lower incomes and fewer jobs. It also means lower government revenues, so less investment to support families and fight long-term challenges like climate change. The IMF also said the global growth forecast for the Asia Pacific region for the rest of this year and next. Has dropped slightly. It said inflation is largely under control in the region, except in Australia and New Zealand. The organization also warned of the impact of higher tariffs and protectionism over supply chains. More details from Nathan King. While the U.S. economy is strong, it's the Asia Pacific region that will grow the fastest next year, says the IMF. While revised growth rates are slightly lower for China and India, the IMF sees solid growth above the global average unless demand, especially from the U.S., weakens in 2025. In contrast, several Wall Street banks have recently revised upward forecasts for Chinese economic growth. And with the U.S. election just days away, the IMF warned of the effect of protectionism, especially over supply chains. And tariffs. And in the long run, everyone hurts from trade fragmentation. That's because global demand comes down, and global demand comes down, everyone hurts. Large debts in the Asia Pacific region are one major worry. However, balance sheets were, of course, built up during the COVID-19 pandemic, says the IMF. And now global interest rates are declining, and it's time to start paying down the debt. Also on Thursday, IMF managing director Kristalina Gorgieva warned that China's growth. Could drop below four percent unless more reforms are enacted, encouraging efforts to boost domestic production and continue to reform the property sector. Of course, the one big global uncertainty is happening here in the U.S. The presidential election just days away, and while it's two very different candidates, both seem to want to continue with the protectionist policies,、uh, whether it's onshoring manufacturing jobs or reworking global supply chains to satisfy what Washington calls a national security. Demands and of course there could be more tariffs as well. That was Nathan King reporting. In South America, attendees at the United Nations Biodiversity Conference are highlighting threats to wildlife and the communities that protect them. COP16 host country Colombia has lost more than six million hectares of forest since 1990. Michelle Begu reports. Deforestation is rapidly growing in Colombia thanks to illicit economies like drug trafficking, arms smuggling, and the illegal wildlife trade. Caught in the middle are marginalized communities that are trying to protect nature, but are often reduced to just trying to survive. These are historically marginalized communities that have been historically abandoned by the government, where there is no alternative economic strategies, and where organized criminal groups have coerced communities. Nancy Bravo comes from one of those war-ravaged areas in Colombia. Her Nasa indigenous community in the Cauca Valley has been battling deforestation from the illegal coca trade. 
Bravo says her people have fought hard to develop legitimate, sustainable businesses that they hope to strengthen. She is a spectator at COPE 16 and wants to learn what other communities are doing to battle illegal economies. We consider as a community that any opportunity to unite and whoever we can ally with for the care of the environment is important. That is why we are here. A major cause of deforestation in the Amazon rainforest is illegal gold mining in Colombia, Peru and Brazil. In Colombia alone, officials said in 2022 that 85% of gold exported from Colombia had been mined illegally. Officials from Colombia's Environment Ministry tell us they are looking at several strategies to combat deforestation, strengthening communities and tackling transnational crime at the same time. One of those strategies would be to push for a COPE 16 agreement to promote transparency in the mineral sector and encourage more discussions for robust change. We want the signing of an international agreement for the traceability and transparency of minerals so that producers and buyers can find transparency in the process, so we can halt conflicts, human trafficking, contamination and mercury use. At COP16, dialogue is taking place at every level to create a peaceful balance with nature. That was Michel Begu on the urgency to reduce the impacts of human activities on nature. Turning to Europe, the French foreign minister says an international conference in Paris has raised one billion US dollars in pledges to support Lebanon. Government delegations and international organizations aim to collect humanitarian aid and a push for a ceasefire. But diplomats say they expect a little progress, with the United States focused on its own efforts. Ross Cullen has more from Paris. Well, the $1 billion that was raised on Thursday roughly split between $800 million for humanitarian aid and $200 million for Lebanon's security services. Uh, it was well over the expected total. The French president said he was hoping to match the United Nations goal of around $400 million. They said that was needed urgently by the Lebanese people, but the some 70 countries and international organizations that attended the international summit here managed to pledge one billion dollars to support the Lebanese people of whom hundreds of thousands have been displaced. It was hosted by France uh, which has put itself at the heart of this uh, try to fundraise as much possible for Lebanon and Emmanuel Macron delivered the opening remark saying that there must be a lasting ceasefire in Lebanon. He also voiced his disapproval once again for the ongoing Israeli bombing campaign against Hezbollah targets in uh, Lebanon. We also heard from the Lebanese Prime Minister Najib Mikati, and he was saying that Lebanon has not only suffered an immense loss of life, there's also been a major impact on the country's economy, on its infrastructure, and so a lot of this money is for humanitarian aid to support uh, hospitals and roads that need to be rebuilt, to make sure children can continue uh, to go to school, for example, make sure there is enough food uh, for children. And we did have that call from Emmanuel Macron for a ceasefire, but for the moment, it does seem that there is no end in sight to the conflicts in Lebanon. That was Ross Cullen in Paris. In the Middle East, the Gaza Strip has witnessed another day of Israeli bombardments. The Palestinian civil defense says an Israeli strike on Jabalia in northern Gaza killed and injured at least 150 people. Rami al reports from Gaza. There are two major strikes, Israeli air strikes, in the central Gaza Strip. The one, including the one in Nusayrat, a school in Nusayrat, a shelter school called Al Shuhada. A school has been hit by the Israel, an Israeli air strike, causing the death of 17 people, including 11 children and women, actually, and the injury of uh, dozens of others. This is uh, the, 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 the strike in Nusayrat. Another strike occurred in the Magazi refugee camp just nearby in the central Gaza Strip, where at least four people were killed and 16 others were reportedly injured when an Israeli warplane uh, struck a sports club in the Magazi refugee camp. In the northern Gaza Strip, it has been reported that hundreds of Palestinian men from northern Gaza have been rounded up, rounded up by the Israeli army, uh, detained by the Israeli army in different parts of the Jabalia refugee camp. A second round of 
of vaccination against polio in the northern Gaza Strip has been postponed till until another notice or uh, 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 until another notice. That's what has been received by in, in text messages to the people population over there who are stranded over there uh, as the Israeli uh, operations continue unabated in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. That was Rami Almagari in Gaza. Finally, on the 2024 BRICS summit, Chinese President Xi Jinping has called for collective wisdom and strength from global South countries to take the lead in the building of a community with a shared future for mankind. In his speech at the BRICS Plus Leaders Dialogue in Kazan, where BRICS member states and their outreach partners gathered to discuss cooperation, the Chinese president stressed the crucial role of the global South in driving development and stability. He pledged that China will remain rooted in the global South, regardless of the evolving international landscape. Wang Qianhui has more. President Xi said on Thursday that the collective rise of global South is a clear sign of significant global change. The collective rise of the global South is a distinctive feature of the great transformation across the world. Global South nations marching together toward modernization is monumental in world history and an unprecedented feat in human civilization. At the same time, world peace and development still face severe challenges, and the road to prosperity for the global South will not be even. Standing at the forefront of the global South, we should show our collective wisdom and strength and stand up to our responsibility to build a community of a shared future for mankind. President Xi emphasized that BRICS plus countries should serve as a stabilizing force for peace, strengthen global security governance, and explore ways to address both the symptoms and the root causes of hotspot issues. He highlighted China's role in promoting world peace, such as issuing the six-point consensus with Brazil and launching the Friends for Peace group with other global South nations to address the Ukraine crisis. China is also actively facilitating peace negotiations between two Palestinian factions in Beijing in July. President Xi called for efforts to achieve a full ceasefire in Gaza, restart the Tuesday solution, and prevent the conflict from spreading in Lebanon. President Xi further pointed out that BRICS plus countries should be a central pillar of strength for common development. He noted that development has contributed to the rise of the global south. He said BRICS plus countries should actively participate in and lead the reform of the global economic governance system and advocate for placing development at the core of the international trade and economic agenda. Over the past three years, the Global Development Initiative has mobilized nearly 20 billion U.S. dollars in development funding and launched over 1,100 projects. Xi Jinping also called for BRICS plus countries to be a driving force for mutual learning among civilizations. He emphasized the importance of communication, urging BRICS plus members to support each other in pursuing modernization paths tailored to their own national conditions. He added that China would take the lead in establishing a global South think tank cooperation alliance. No matter how the international landscape evolves, China will always keep our heart in and maintain our roots in the global South. We support more global South countries to join BRICS as full members, partner countries, or in the BRICS Plus format, so we can combine our great strength and build a community of shared future for mankind. President Xi also highlighted that China's comprehensive deepening of reforms and push for China's modernization will provide even more opportunities for the world. That was Wang Qianhui on China's commitment at the BRICS meetings in Russia. Now, recapping the headlines, the International Monetary Fund has warned that the global economy is in danger of getting stuck on a low-growth, high-debt path. The United States' self-centered approach has disillusioned diplomats at a Paris conference where one billion U.S. dollars were raised in pledges to support Lebanon. And Chinese President Xi Jinping has stressed the crucial role of the global south in driving development and stability as leaders gathered in Russia for the BRICS meetings. And that's it for this edition of The Top Story, a podcast that brings you world headlines every weekday. For more news in politics, business, sports and culture, you can subscribe to The Beijing Hour, a one-hour podcast news magazine program. We would welcome and appreciate all ratings and reviews. I'm Xi Zhu. Thank you for listening. <laughs>